Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the Australia Council Amendment, Creative Australia Bill 2023, and I support and welcome the amendments that the government has proposed in this bill, which are long overdue. The arts are integral for our well-being and critical for a flourishing society. They tell our stories, propagate our culture and inspire us to be the best that we can be. The arts and creative industry in Australia is worth some $17 billion. Launched on 30 January 2023, the National Cultural Policy Revive is a comprehensive policy to revive the arts, entertainment and cultural sector. After COVID caused its most difficult period in decades to so many in that sector, and I know many are in my community in Warringah. In 2013, 2020, between 2013 and 2022, we have seen that the federal arts portfolio contract and funding stagnated. Then we saw COVID-19 pandemic further devastate so many in the arts. The temporary crisis support that was offered by the previous government, uh, it was offered but it was distrib distributed in an inequitable manner and the arts ultimately did not get the same support that other sectors did. But let's get real. It was the artists and the culture and their content that sustained us through COVID, the COVID pandemic, those long hours of lockdown. It was the Australian TV shows, comedy, arts, music, film, documentaries. They entertained us. They kept us sane during those long days in lockdown. When creatives couldn't work and had no source of income during the pandemic, it really highlighted how tough an existence it is to work in the arts in Australia. The pandemic saw the live entertainment industry decline by 69% in 2020, losing some $1.4 billion in revenue. So this bill proposes changes in the fund and funding and provides funding which is much needed uh, and it's a boost to revive Australia's arts, entertainment and cultural sector. It's a first in a series of bills supporting the implementation of the national cultural policy. This bill will allow the Australian <coughs> Council of the Arts for the Arts to operate under the name Creative Australia and four new entities will be rolled out over the next four years from 1 July 2023. The Centre for Arts and Entertainment Workplaces, Music Australia, Writers Australia and the First Nations Body. Music Australia will grow our music industry and help secure global audiences. Of course, we have such a rich tradition. I mean, you know, when you think of some of our iconic rock bands that really led the way overseas, from Midnight Oil to In Excess, I remember growing up with such Australian artists and it was so, uh, so exciting. Writers Australia will provide funding, research and advocacy for writers because, of course, we need to tell our stories. We need to ensure future generations have the benefit of those hard-learned hard ex uh, experiences but also the inspiration that can really uh, set their, help them set their sights on what they can achieve. And appropriately, one of the first changes is the establishment of a First Nations-led board to make decisions about investment in First Nations art and culture. Because, of course, that is something that an area that has just grown in recognition it is so incredibly symbolic of Australia. Recognising the crucial place of First Nations story and the importance of self-determination. Legislation to protect the copyright of Indigenous artists, including blocking the sale of fake Indigenous art. I mean, that is quite... It's a quite eye-opening when you start to appreciate the statistics of what goes on there. And I have supported in this place previously seconding uh, a bill for them, the member for Kennedy in relation to that fake, the sale of fake Indigenous art and how, just how abusive that is. Um, a First Nations Languages Policy Partnership supporting 60 primary schools to teach local First Nations language. That's exciting. It's one of the things that I've seen develop actually recently during acknowledgements of country where we now are starting to get more um, original uh, First Nations language spoken. It's something that I, I hope that one day we will have a verse of the Australian anthem in Indigenous language like New Zealand has. I think it really would be exciting from a point of view of reconciliation to acknowledge we have the longest living culture in the world in Australia. We should be proud of that and celebrate it. 
So, and also undertaking to pursue the repatriation to Australia of First Nations ancestors and artefacts from overseas and, from, and the formation of a national resting place, I think, is incredibly important and overdue. The Centre for the Arts and Entertainment will stimulate new employment and training opportunities and ensure access to fair remuneration and safe work environments. This is a big step forward. It's acknowledging arts workers as legitimate workers. It will address complaints about fair pay, sexual harassment, bullying and discrimination in the industry. Government funding will be withdrawn if organisations fail to adhere, adhere to new workplace safety standards. That, these are good. We have to think it was actually in the arts sector and of industry that the Me Too movement started because of the acknowledgement of the harassment and the bullying that was occurring um, and the assaults occurring in that industry. Under the bill, the intellectual property rights of our creators will be protected. The bill will ensure that funding decisions continue to be made on the basis of artistic merit and at arm's length from government. I very much welcome, the, uh, and I know this bill is very welcomed by the production industry, uh, and it's the introduction, and I note the minister is here and I thank him, the, the local content quotas for streaming services, which I've previously spoken about in this place. However, uh, the exact per percentage has not been announced and I will be uh, following up with the minister on those issues. I've received many emails from constituents from Warringah calling for streaming services such as Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video to have a fixed percentage of local content. Quotas are vital and industry would like to see a firm commitment to 20% or 30% made by the government. In Moringa, we have a number of great local content producers, including Cheeky, Cheeky Little, Kapow Pictures, Stick Pictures, among others, and they're under threat and constantly challenged for being crowded out by international streamers. And it's important to remember that companies like those, they employ the creatives, they employ the programmers, they employ, you know, it, it gives birth to so much in that industry. And so we need to ensure that local, uh, stre that streaming services do respect local content and that those quotas are in place. Um, I'm pleased to see the other key measures within the Revi Revive, and that includes from, from July, a digital lending rights scheme, which is where authors, illustrators and editors will be able to earn money when their e-books and audiobooks are borrowed from a library. This could add thousands of dollars to their income. I've spoken with Pantera Press in my lecture about the issue and they very much welcome this. The creation of a Works of Scale Fund to commission new Australian works is of course very welcome. And the $11.8 million extra funding for the National Gallery of Australia for a pilot program to tour its collection to galleries around Australia is incredibly exciting. In February, I had the chance to tour the National Gallery of Australia and see and be inspired by the works of Cressida Campbell as the uh, program of the Know Her Name campaign designed to elevate the knowledge and recognition, understanding of female artists in Australia. And so many of the works of Cressida actually take into account the beautiful Sydney foreshores, and there were some sites, in fact, in Warringah. Um, and it was just incredibly serene and inspiring to go and uh, see that exhibit. And to know that it will have the opportunity to tour is incredibly wonderful. Uh, so I do look forward to future events, and I hope um, that there will be this continuation of a campaign, the Know Her Name campaign, for too long women's contribu contribution to our cultural and social uh, fabric has not been properly recognised. And in particular today, on International Women's Day, it is incredibly important to acknowledge that. Developing an arts and disability plan under Australia's disability strategy for 2021 to 31 to enable people with disability to access and participate fully in the cultural and creative life of Australia. The restoration of the Australian Interactive Games Fund under the Screen Australia, which supports local video game development and was abolished, by, which was abolished by the coalition government. The package will also include an increase in funding to regional arts fund 
and a pilot funding for an art and music therapy program. So there is a lot to celebrate in this package. Uh, I think many around Australia will take heart in knowing that, that creative industries in Australia, both in our urban centres and in our regions, will be supported. Um, there's always a little, a few things that can be done better. So some criticisms in the media has been that there wasn't sufficient consultation from the glam sector. Now that is galleries, libraries, archives and museums. I did receive correspondence from concerned uh, professors um, that the minister's panel did not include any historians um, and that funding is desperately needing for the National Gallery of Australia and some of our other institutions like the National Library of Australia for infrastructure repairs and collections maintenance, including the free online research portal Trove. I've received dozens of emails from Moringa constituents requesting further funding, funding to save Trove. Um, Trove, for some of those that don't know, has more than six billion di uh, digital items. And with the Australian public being at a cultural crossroad, it's more important than ever to secure Trove's place in Australian storytelling. On the 20th of February 2023, I wrote to the Minister requesting funding, and I do acknowledge that he has indicated uh, that it is front of mind and being considered by, by the government. There is still work to be done in the sector around wages. Uh, I know this is a sector with very strong casual employment. There is a lot of uh, insecure work. It tends to be rolling contracts. Uh, I've strongly advocated for uh, the literary and visual arts communities that need more recognition as well. It's easy to grasp onto the high profile industries. Some, some of the others struggle a little. Um, they've proposed, so the literary and visual arts communities have proposed a universal basic income program for artists in line with international models, as well as tax-free prizes. The bill makes a limited commitment to include consideration of minimum wages for the sector as part of the broader review of modern awards. Um, and I think that is something that really should be considered. Uh, the National Association of Visual Arts has concerns about support for individual artists and arts workers in the proposal and wants to see payment of standards that are enforceable. In Warringah, uh, our community is highly engaged in the arts, with almost one in ten of Warringah's workforce employed in cultural or creative occupations. There are over 450 businesses in Warringah in the arts and recreation uh, sector. And across the northern beaches, um, work in the arts sector expected to double, people working in this sector are expected to double by 2025. Live music in Warringah is seeing a revitalisation, particularly in Brookvale, through the creation and integration uh, with the emergence of many microbreweries in the area. It's just nearly cool to be in Brookvale. Uh, as Council comp completes its consultation on the Brookvale Structure Plan, I urge them to ensure that the arts are front and centre of the design and that the live music can be blended within the new environment. The Brookvale Arts District, a consortium of local individuals, companies and institutions, they've, become, they've come together to maintain and enhance the existing creative and, and industrial fabric of Brookvale. And they've done this, and it's so successfully, to integrate with future development in the area, creating a valuable and flourishing Brookvale as much as possible. There's so much potential and creativity already bring, brimming out of Brookvale, so I really look forward to seeing what this group can achieve and develop further. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to attend the very highly successful activation of the Sydney Harbour Federation Trust lands at North Head Sanctuary. This was the live at the barracks night, and it will be coming again this year, so I'll invite the minister to come and attend. We will have great Australian acts. Um, it's a concert series bringing national musical talent to North Head uh, at Manly. So you're, sit you're standing in these iconic locations listening to great Australian music. The live music, the unique natural environment of the trust lands and the surrounding national park. Um, in the wake of years of funding cuts for the arts and creative industries, this bill is incredibly welcome. Uh, it's been welcomed by the industry. It's a major step forward. I congratulate the government for acknowledging the importance of the arts in Australian life by introducing the Creative Australia Bill, uh, and I commend the bill to the House.